So let's let's go. <coughs> Figures started behind the judges. Again here, inconsistencies in the current version of the rules, where some rules call for not grading, uh, some others say to grade, reserve marks, no reserve marks, etc. This fixes the situation for a figure starting behind the judge, the judge grades and weighs with a note behind and then simple majority <coughs> to declare the figure was behind or not. Any question, comment? Nick? Uh, this is a very small comment. Uh, reading what is uh, presented in the document, it says if the majority holds the figure was started behind, then it should be a hard zero. But then it says, if the figure is deemed by the majority to have been flown in front. So if it is five each, this does not provide an answer. So it needs to be majority behind, otherwise in front. John, you want to comment on that? In that situation, the chief judge would have a casting vote, I guess, and um, so that I think should be made clear. And then just on the board there, the to be changed by the chief judge, it obviously it would be changed by the judge himself and signed on the instructions of the chief judge. Fine. All right. So, this will be changed accordingly. Any other comments, question? Objection to this plus what was said by Nick and John. Proposal number 20. Mandatory boundary judges for intermediates. So, all that to say, first of all, we call boundary judges Boundary judges everywhere in the document. That's the first thing, that's the editorial on terminology. Uh, and for the rest, it simply it says that for all, uh, for all championships, boundary judges are mandatory, except for continental championships. Any comment, question? Objection? No? Yes? Comment, John. I think all the Yak 52 ones held to date, I, I don't think they've ever had boundary judges, is that correct? I'm just asking. Well, the uh, Yak 52 competitions were held in Russia and Lithuania, both countries are against the boundary judging at all. Then, is there any comment on the YAC 52 here? You want to? No? So, any objection to this? Question to the organizer of the next competition. You asked about uh, uh, championships which already are held, but you are going to. Uh, start the new kind of competitions. Are you going to have the boundary judges? What's your opinion? I would have. Uh, we would have followed the practice to date with the Act 52 and not had. But if it becomes part of the uh, regulations to have it, we'll comply. What about the intermediate? No, it would. It will be the. It, would be the same for both the Act 52 and Intermediate because we ran into the same rules, but... Uh... So, I, is there a formal objection to this so that we have a vote, or...? You want a comment? Here. Yeah. Well, actually, Lithuania made a proposal 
to exclude boundaries, judging at all from all competitions. And here is opposite proposal. I think that boundary judging has a lot of disadvantages and no advantages at all for organizers and for pilots. So I think that that we should vote for this and I'm calling I'm asking to vote uh, not to include the boundary judging. So thank you for that. It means that we will have a vote on this one immediately and of course we will have the expanded proposal later on and we'll discuss that at that time. What what happens in the expanded proposal afterwards would in that case supersede that one depending on what's voted. Elena? Uh, just a note. If uh, one of the uh, objective of this competition as I understand is to let people with uh, less financial uh, abilities to participate in the world championships and so on. One of the objectives, as I understood. So I think in this case, uh, on lower level competitions, uh, lo uh, to have boundary judges will certainly increase the cost of the competition, the entry fee, and so on. So uh, if we talk seriously, I would suggest to remove boundary judges from intermediate and the 52 competitions at all. Right, thank you for that. So it means we now have a vote. And who is in favor of this proposal? Uh, everybody has vote, okay. Hi, please. Oh, okay. Uh, Hi. Okay. Um, we count again. Uh, Hi, please. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Who is against? Hi, please. Ten. Ten against. One abstention. One abstention, probably. Ah, yes. Okay, which means the proposal is adopted. So, proposal 21. With judges' currency again, um, you remember we've seen that before uh, when we discussed the previous one. So here it's uh, some complementary compliments uh, on the recent experience in same category or higher. This is specified here, and in case uh, the experience is in national championship, to bring a, a proof of participation uh, in that case. Uh, any comment, question? Philip. You're really just out of fun. What is the proof of participation? <laughs> what is the proof of participation? I will hand the mic to Mike. Uh, this was a U.S. proposal. We don't really care what she uses proof as long as it's proof. <laughs> uh, I mean, certainly uh, a letter from the contest director saying that you served at that championships or the chief judge, or if some of your countries have log books for judges, that would be proof. Uh, anything that would say that you actually were there. We, we have no way of knowing today whether or not that participation actually occurred. There's nothing in the rules about it. So this is why we ask that that proof be provided. But would you say a uh, word of mouth is a proof of participation as well? You want to press my name in English? <laughs> no, a word of mouth. Somebody says that this guy was there. Is it enough or not? Oh, I think it would be. Okay, 
John? Yeah. It just a comment about the... Oh, now I understand. No, that's okay. The judging subcommittee, in fact, when we get a new judge, we do, in fact, ask for performance details from the national championship or an international event, for example, Scandinavian Championship or whatever. We're doing that already, and have been doing that for three years already. So we do, in fact, get proof that they've been at a similar championship by asking for the results and asking for the RI. And uh, again, as Mike knows, uh, um, we've been getting the RI from the United States, even though they haven't previously been producing that information. So we're actually following this already. John, Question. Elena. Question, uh, how and why does it? Say again, please. Well, so, uh, inside the same category, does it mean that same category power, or same, same category glider, or whether, the, let's say, glider advance apply for uh, power advance? Doesn't say because it doesn't say because category in that case you see is the the level here uh, and it's regardless of whether it's glider or power I think that's correct yes Mike you want to say something Uh, again, this was a U.S. proposal, and it was only for Section 6, Part 1, not for Part 2. That's the, if you look, it was only for Part 1. All I can say is the proposal that we've submitted was for Part 1. If I get it right, it means that what we call experience should be in power as well. I think that it should be uh, something similar for glider, but in glider it it's, would be much easier because you only have advanced and unlimited. So if somebody judged in an advanced glider championships at a, at a national level or an international level, then they would be current for a glider advanced in the world. Same for unlimited. Then you should leave it alone. That, that's why we only dealt with, our proposal was only for part one. In my opinion, and as Mike stated, this is a proposal for Section 6, Part 1. So it's a, uh, applicable for judges on our championships. And in such, uh, from my understanding, the wording of the appropriate category is this call, which is power aerobatics and includes the level, which might be intermediate depth between advanced or unlimited. So, from my opinion, the judge Uh, that was also a U.S. proposal, which we did not submit again, because it was too controversial. So this is why we simplified our proposal this year to only this change here. Okay. I have it enough. Uh, did, did, did this answer your question, John? Yes, so the difference between, uh, I know this is only for Section 1, but in practice, we have been, uh, for example, this year we took the top um, results <coughs> from the top rider judge and the 
on that basis included him in the power competition because uh, he's very successful in uh, gliding and uh, there's no reason we couldn't take it. We didn't ask for his um, record in power events in Germany, for example. We just took the record for international events in gliding and considered that to be good enough. Which means we now have a big I have one. In addition, I would kindly remind the delegates that we not do any difference anymore between power and glider judges. So to have such a definition in part one for power only just doesn't make sense. Right, so let me summarize what's happening here. We have this proposal with the clarification that will be added that the recent experience we're talking about is also in power, in those categories here. And we need to vote since there are some questions or comments that call for a vote. Who then is, is in favor of this proposal, please? But uh, we have something before, Mike. Yes, uh, I just want to address one thing. When, when we tar start saying things like uh, it doesn't make sense, let me tell you what makes sense about this proposal. This proposal uh, would require that a judge, for example, who wants to judge at the World Aerobatic Championships in Power Unlimited, would have had the experience of doing that at a national or international level before. That's not in the rules today. The rules today only say appropriate class, and that was our objection before and why we had submitted proposals in previous years. What our pilots expect is that when a judge is on the board of judges at the World Aerobatic Championships and Power Unlimited, that that person will have judged Unlimited that year or in the previous year. And I do not believe that's an unreasonable expectation on the part of the pilots, and this would fix this. So therefore, I would urge you to vote for this proposal. Right, so you've heard that there, there's this uh, debate of whether someone having judged a limited glider, for instance, in the, in the year or the previous year, would be or not eligible to be on the board of judges on a limited power. That is the, uh, the debate. And one last call from Manfred, and after we have to vote. I only want to say, if this goes through, then it would be a logical move to reinstate the distinction between power and glider judges. All right. So, we have to move on. Who is in favor of this proposal? Raise high, please. Hey, everybody has voted. Mm. Higher, please. Loudspeaker, higher. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Who is against this proposal? <coughs> Attention. So, this means this proposal is rejected. Number 22 about titles, medals. Where does this come from? It comes from, uh, kind of, first of all, a kind of uh, not fully aligned um, list of titles and medals depending on the uh, category, not fully consistent, plus too many world champion titles. This is about removing the title for world champion in the individual programs while keeping the medals for each program and diplomas. And here you have a summary of what is proposed in terms of the list of champions. Uh, in the World Championships. Any <coughs> question or comment?
Any objection? Did they know? Just, I think in uh, some of his lines, in some of his lines, in the proposal, some uh, words are omitted, like uh, Kim Champion will have, uh, let's say, unlimited world, team, or world unlimited team champion, world advanced team champion, because in the proposal it, it doesn't show, and in the other proposal also. So, so that, that's correct. If you read carefully the proposal, you see that there is also a, uh, some a, a guideline or some guidance about what the titles should be exactly, uh, uh, and this will be reflected in the uh, exact wording that we put in the in the rules. That we have world category and a rapid champion. Any other comment? How about it intermediate? <laughs> so, I'm sorry, uh, Antonio? Intermediate So, intermediate, in that case, would follow the same principles as what we have here on advanced and YAC 52. Because intermediate, it, it looks like YAC 52 in terms of uh, of competition, then titles would follow the YAC 52. I take note for the edition. Any other comment? And then now, and then finish. Okay, and if uh, the next year, let's say, will be a proposal for something like YAC 52 Advanced uh, Championships, or YAC 52 Intermediate Championships, it will be World uh, YAC 52 Advanced Championships? Champion? So just very quickly, Elena, on this we cannot uh, speculate what will happen. It depends on proposals. <coughs> uh, I only want to say something from the glider side. I mean, in glider programs, the unknowns are quite important ones. It's actually the ones who are interesting to see what's going on. To be honest, the knowns and the freeze are, sorry, boring. So with the unknowns, we do it in glider three or even four if you want to count the three unknown. And I always have to say I think it's a little bit sad if the winner of four programs out of six doesn't get some kind of honor, medal, prize, whatever you want to call it. I mean general four reducing the number of let's say titles. That's a good thing. On the other hand, Four out of six programs is quite a lot in a, in a world or, or continental championship, therefore not giving anything to the guy who wins the whole of the four programs makes me a little bit sad. The proposal. That's not the proposal. The proposal says the first, second, and third placings in the various programs, known, free, and combined unknowns in the gliders, will be awarded the, bron the gold, silver, and bronze medals. Please look down on page 17. 17? Yeah. Well, I think uh, regarding the unknowns, right now there is this exact situation in power, but the only uh, one which is uh, actually awarded with something is unlimited uh, wall, uh, where the win of two combined sequences is awarded by uh, uh, Eric Miller trophy. All other uh, combined uh, winners have the title which is not recognized by anything. No medal, no diploma, no prize. It's just in the rules that the winner of two unknowns combined have the title of the uh, world champion. But it's not recognized. So just to note here, I think the debate on how we uh, award the prize prize on the combined trophies, etc. This comes in addition to this. Uh, it's a slightly different debate. Here's 
only about the titles and medals, and then we have a debate about the trophies. My fault, Any uh, objection then? <coughs> Did I hear someone? No? Any objection? No objection? Adopted, and we'll go to the next one. Number 23. Here we come to the discussion of the trophies. We have a number of trophies already in the rooms. Um, the USA uh, came with a proposal after having reviewed the full list of trophies, trying to get some consistency on awards like trophies, recognizing that a number would be helpful to add to the current list. You have in the proposal a number of trophies for which this proposal would call for creation of those trophies, funding, etc. This is not something for the rules initially. This is something initially to call for something to happen there. Colin, Elena. The trophy for the team champion in the F-52 exists and been awarded at every competition. Right, so this then would be corrected. We have a list here of trophies for which the proposal calls for ideas on how to do that if anybody would volunteer to uh, create such a trophy, etc. So I, it, it's not something, again, for the rules initially. Once the trophies exist, we implement those in the rules. Today, it's about a call to you, Siva delegates, to us, what we want to do on this. Um, I don't know exactly what how to proceed on this one, whether you want to create something, whether you want to ask the Bureau to, to uh, follow that up. Mike? Yes, of course, this is beyond the scope of the rules. And regarding the cha Team Champion Trophy in Yak-52, uh, the U.S. was not aware of this, and nor do I think that trophy is listed in the rules today. So. Uh, other trophies, of course, like the Oresti Cup, the Nesterov, and so on, those names are listed in Section 6 today. And if there is a Yak-52 trophy, uh, whether it be for team or overall, it, it really should be included in the rules. As far as I know, today it is not. Uh, okay. So anyway, that can easily be corrected, but here's the point of the proposal. When, we, uh, when the trophies that we uh, award, now award in uh, unlimited power, of course, most of those were created back in the 60s and, and afterwards. But since the 80s, since the 1980s, we've added glider, uh, and then later glider advanced. We've added advanced power and now Yak-52 and Intermediate. So what's happened is, is our trophies have remained stagnant with the exception of a couple of trophies that have been added along the way, like the Peter Sellier's trophy for the advanced world champion, and, and as, the, as Elena mentions, these trophies for Yak-52. But when we looked at the list of trophies that we give away and then the, the categories and the championships that we have today, there's this vast discrepancy where trophies don't exist. Uh, for champions that should receive something beyond the, the gold medal. And, uh, of course, we're not asking for the creation of any particular trophy at the moment. But what I would like to propose is that this list of trophies uh, that we've uh, made in the proposal uh, be uh, turned over to the Bureau, and the Bureau be authorized to begin work on the creation of these new trophies uh, with, with, and seeking out sponsors, uh, if necessary, for the, those trophies to be made. Fortunately, we have a, a, a very beautiful set of trophies for unlimited power right now that were donated by various aero clubs and individuals over the years. I'm convinced that we can, we can have similar trophies created in the future 
if we just simply make the effort to do so and seek out the sponsors that we need to do it. So I would just simply ask the Bureau be authorized to move this forward. All right. Thank you, Mike. Any other comments? So, IG, so uh, I think your proposal might reach is a consensus and the Bureau will move on and follow that up. Ah, I don't know. Well, I think it's not only their task for the Bureau. Uh, before, the trophies were created by some national air class and presented to SIVA and asked to be accepted as a trophy for some uh, uh, title, category, or award. So I think it's, uh, we need to invite all the delegates uh, think about which trophy they can produce and uh, give to the whole aerobatic community as a to different. So I, I'm for this proposal 100%, but just it's not the test for the Bureau only. It's the test for all the delegates and all countries to contribute to to the winners of uh, the championship they uh, <coughs> take part of. And if we can, uh, after we accept this, can back to the previous proposal one more time, because I think it's still not clear what Philip said. There is no, no anything now except the unlimited uh, combined, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, unknowns. Now in the proposals, only uh, separate programs exist, no combined <coughs> champion for unknown. So do we get rid of it or be regarded with something, with metal or with diploma? It, it's still a question. So I, uh, there are two points. First point, I, I need to be clear, I think, on what the consensus would be. When we say the Bureau to follow up, it means it doesn't mean that the Bureau members would uh, uh, go in that garage and manufacture some trophies. It, it, it does mean that the Bureau will, would follow up and make sure and and promote and push the, the countries to come forward with uh, proposals on trophies. So I think this is this is clear and that would fix your 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 first point. Um, your your second point, indeed, we have on the previous proposals the world champion titles and medals, and here we have trophies, uh, to which we can also add if, if it makes sense. Uh, I think what we adopted in the previous proposal, that, that there is no world champion title uh, for uh, the, uh, the combined unknowns, or do you have a different view on what we adopted? Yeah, I just wanted to make clear, uh, because the, in the previous year it was kind of regarded with uh, some title which was not backed up with any medal or any diploma, so now we don't have any combined unknowns thing. So it just, it's not, it doesn't exist. Uh, we just have separate programs. I just wanted to make it clear. Only in unlimited, we have some combined standing. So I think that's exactly what we what we said before. Plus, then trophies can be awarded for the combined. But there is no such discipline to combine right now. So if the trophy exists, we will have it. If the trophy does not exist, it, it does not exist. Am I right? I think that's what we adopted. Just what what the Okay, so on that one, the Bureau, the bureau is asked uh, by this plenary to take care that something can happen to uh, fulfill that as much as possible, but then of course it will be up to, to NAX to uh, respond to the request from the Bureau. Carol, we have to vote. 
whether the plenary accepts that principle or not. What majority do we need for that? 13. Simple majority? Yes. So, we have to vote who is in favor of having the Bureau follow up on those ideas here. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, Twenty-five. Sorry. Twenty-five. Twenty-four. <laughs> so this one is about the official wind direction again, uh, fixing some editorials. Um, I've indicated here with more detail what would be uh, changed on four two three two because there's a, a there was a typo in the document. So this would be the correct version. Do you have any question or comment? Any objection? Elena? Just the addition that the information of the official wind and, and the current wind should not only be on the flight line, it should be in the location where all, most of the uh, pilots are located like uh, the team, uh, team's village or whatever you call it or because uh, let's say in uh, as I understand in Texas it was pretty long runs to go from one place to another and if you have the uh, wind information only on the flight, li flight line you need to you, you don't have it in, in the, let's say in the briefing tent so I think it, it needs to be clear that the information should be located not only in one place, but it should be readily available at the places where most of the pilots are located. Because it's not only when you, you need to see the wind right before your flight, you kind of need to follow the trend of the wind. I, I, I believe that you know, what you say is, is completely okay and uh, uh, if this is uh, okay, okay for everyone, we will reflect that as to the best uh, in, in, the, in the detailed wording. Uh, that of course we need the uh, the wind just uh, before takeoff and also uh, at the place where people are. I'm not sure about what would be the final wording, but I think this is clear and mine. Yeah, just to clarify uh, for everyone what actually happened in Texas, for those of you that were not there, we actually had three places where the wind was displayed. The wind was at the hangar where the aircraft were kept. Uh, there was the starter also was on the golf cart, and his assistant had a white board, and that was updated constantly, and that white board was shown to the pilot before he started and went and taxied. So that information was instantly available. In addition to that, I'm not sure this was covered in the reports, but uh, the contest organization also utilized Twitter for the transmission of uh, wind information. And all of us that were on Twitter and had our smartphones with us received the uh, wind information immediately. Uh, it was the quickest transmission of wind uh, data that I've ever seen at a championships. So I thought that was exceptionally well handled there. Uh, I didn't mean to criticize the sort of competition this time. I just mean that, that there are places where the locations of flight line and pilots are far apart. So uh, yeah, and, and of course, the future, so it's just a, an example of the location. In Texas, uh, everything was spread out there, and that's the reason we utilized those three methods. But it, it was a lesson for the future and something that might be considered for the handbook is that uh, these different ways of transmitting uh, data be utilized. Twitter was very handy. We used it for a lot of things there. But it's monitored by NSA. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I now get the It's monitored by NSA. <laughs> it's
Just one thing, in Texas, uh, there was a different point for the win, uh, SMS2. The problem is that uh, several times we had uh, mistakes uh, from, for the wind direction. And uh, I have personally won. I was in the plane uh, ready to take off. And the wind was at uh, 180 degrees uh, from the good direction. So maybe if we have only one or two points, it would be better to check uh, that the, the wind information I would. <coughs> okay, that, so uh, coming back now to the route. Is there any objection to this proposal number 24? All right, so this is adopted. 25, free program sequence design software. This proposal is about removing any reference to um, some, uh, <coughs> some software names here. In the rules, simply saying that it should be in a format declared acceptable by the Bureau. This proposal has to do with some uh, risks or liability issues, whatever. Uh, any comment, question, objection? Jury chairmanship. If you followed what this proposal is about, today the jury, president of the international jury is a CIVA president or vice president, plus in gliders, can be the, uh, I think the chairman of the gas. Uh, this leads to some issues now with the number of competitions we have and the limited number of people that are eligible. So this is all about extending the eligibility uh, to make sure that we can have presidents of juries. So this proposal is about extending that to all SIVA delegates still keeping the uh, chairman of GASC provision. Any question, comment? LG? Okay, I think um, during the years we had a lot of problems to have good jury precedents. But I would like to add a thing. For example, we have a few number of people that are not delegates, but he has a vast experience from many, many years. And I would like to add that also the Bureau could appoint to a few number of people the possibility to be a jury president. And let's take the example. For example, we have Maddie that is interested to be jury president for the Glider World Championship. And I think that that would be an excellent solution on the problem to have also a few people that could be selected by the Bureau. It, of course, this has to be a few and it has to be people that has a vast experience. At the same time, we also open up for delegates, but the problem is here also that do all these people have the experience that is needed to be a jury president? But I think there are many delegates that has a huge experience, but I would like to add what I just said. Thank you. And Elena. In principle, I follow the LG's words, uh, but Mathieu said we extend the number of people uh, who are available as a channel of the but as we follow the wording of this proposal, we exclude the president and the vice president, uh, saying uh, the chairman will be a delegate to SIBA. We must be careful with the wording, I think. Uh, excuse me, uh, 
I, I need to give the, the, the floor then to invite to uh, react to what we have just said. I think the scenario you're talking about is uh, there's only one, and that is if the president of SEBA is not delegate. Is that correct? Yes, you can. Yes. Yes. No. They're delegates. It is possible for the president of SEVA not to be a delegate, but he cannot be, he has to be a delegate in, a, in order to be initially elected to the presidency. But afterwards, if somebody, uh, if his NAC replaces him, he can still continue to serve. That's a very, very narrow possibility. Well, uh, I think I, I would support the view of LG that some of the, uh, not, some of the delegates have uh, uh, good experience, but I think some of the, let's say, uh, members of uh, subcommittees, like uh, judging subcommittee and rule subcommittee, sometimes have uh, more um, experience and more knowledge of the rules and judging. So uh, could it be just an um, alternate proposal? So we elect, we, we select three members of the jury for each competition and let them elect their president for each, for each jury, for each competition. So in this case, it, kind of, it will make it easier actually because if it, elect, uh, we select the jury president, then we just uh, have to select only two uh, jury members from a bigger pool. And uh, if we select, if we, uh, select three members of the jury from a big pool, and then just uh, whoever they feel like president in, in, in uh, this small body of three persons, they will elect uh, him or her president. Right. So, um, I think what what you what you just uh, uh, said, Elena. Uh, Speak up. I don't know. No. Out of order. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what you just said, I think, is uh, of course uh, worth uh, an investigation and debate, etc. I'm not sure that we are ready to rule on that right now because it, it, it deals with the governance of what we do in SIVA. It, it also touches the fact that if the, if the jury president is elected by this plenary, then there is no matter of debate or question afterwards in case there is a conflict of who wants to be present, whatever. I think it's, it, it, there, there needs to be some time for reflection on that. I'm not sure we're ready for that right now, but I, I leave it also open to the floor to, to react on, on all this. Mike? Well, uh, when we made the proposal, the reason that uh, uh, we included a delegate, that it must be a delegate, is because delegates attend these meetings. Uh, they're usually uh, all experienced. I would hope so anyway, it, since you're, all of you are voting on rules that affect the world championships and you listen to the discussion, since you're part of that discussion, you're part of the rules governing body for all of uh, aerobatics uh, worldwide, then it seems to me that the same people that participate in those discussions, make the decisions, also are qualified to be on the jury. Uh, I'm not so sure, uh, I understand what LG is uh, coming up with, but I'm not so sure that I would be comfortable with giving uh, the Bureau uh, the authority to choose jury members. Uh, I'm, much, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with having it as an election, just as we do today, for all the jury, president and jury members. Uh, I, I think mine that that was not the proposal, but I, I let Ed uh, answer that. I think, first of all, it's, uh, we have probably the situation today 
for the Glider World Championship. And we have one person <coughs> that is interested to be the jury president. And she is very, very experienced. And in that case, let the Bureau decide if we could accept that person. It's not the meaning that the Bureau should appoint jury members, but let's say that there is a possibility for the Bureau to have a few people with that type of experience that we in that case could use as jury pres president or jury president. So what it, what it means essentially is if the Bureau could have the authority to add to the list of eligible people, in that case delegates, uh, a few people and submit that for, for votes when it comes to voting for uh, jury presidents and jury members. La and, and the example taken by, by LG is with this proposal, for instance, uh, it's just an example. It's, it's, uh, we're not making the rule for, for, for that particular case, but if Maddy is interested to, uh, to be a jury president in, uh, in the next Glider Championship, according to this rule, uh, she's not eligible. a few people and submit those people to the votes at plenary for jury presidents and jury member. Alternatively, Elena proposes to amend this proposal by saying uh, that the whole CIVA Bureau is also eligible. How do we deal with... Because right now it's the Bureau that's member who are eligible. No, no, president or vice president, which means excluding secretaries. How do you want to deal with uh, with that? Because we have two options. Am I correct? Then to amend this proposal. So, if you get it right, one proposal, proposal or option number one, extend that to give the Bureau the authority to name people who would be eligible for jury president. Option number two, to extend that not only to president and vice president, presidents, but also to the whole bureau. You get it? Who would be in favor of the first option, bureau authority to add names to the eligible list? Uh, Matthew, uh, can, we, yes. can we do more discussion, please? Uh, oh, oh, all right, all right then, go on. Uh, what would be the limit on that? Uh, how many bureau candidates? One, three, five? And if, if you're going to turn that over to the bureau, then why not just let delegates make those nominations to begin with? Why does it have to be filtered through the bureau? Actually, I think that um, in this case that we have today, that we we are looking perhaps, we have seen that what people are interested to go as a jury president. So in that case, that the Bureau could also then propose somebody like Maddie in this case to be the jury president. The, jury, the Bureau is not interested to submit a different lot of names. It's only interested 
to, to solve the problem that we could have a good competition and we would have the best possible jury members and the best possible jury president. And in this case, as an example, we would like to have Maddie as the jury president. Maddie is not the delegate of France. She's the secretary in the bureau, but perhaps next time it could be some other person that's not the secretary, but is somebody within our community that has a vast experience that we would like to submit. So, and in that case, that the bureau could decide to add a person to this list of delegates. That's my idea. Further debate, Jürgen? There's no debate, but only a question for clarification. Do we extend to delegates only, or to delegates and alternate delegates? Especially in Germany, we have the situation that our delegate uh, is a pilot from the Power Aerobatics, and our alternate delegate is a pilot and an official from the Glider Aerobatics. So that's the reason for the question. Both are experienced. I think that's a, 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 a fair and valid point. Um, Mike, as this originally comes from a USA proposal, do, do you want to react to what you just said? Yes, I, I did think of that because I particularly knew of the German situation where you have you split the duties between power and glider. Switzerland as well. Yeah, same thing there, and I'm sure there's others I'm not thinking of. Sorry. Uh, I would be agreeable to amending the U.S. proposal to include the alternate delegate. I would in, I would be I, I would agree to that amendment. So from this point, let me uh, propose you something. Uh, it's about adding people to the list, so we can do it uh, gradually. A first point, is there any objection to add to the list those people, SIVA delegates? Any objection? I take this is a no. Any objection to add to this list the alternate delegates? I take it there is no objection, so this would be amended accordingly. <coughs> Any objection then? Sorry, no objection. We have the, again the two options, and I think it's time for a vote on those two options to add to what we just said. Option one, as LG just reminded, uh, adding to the list some people nominated by the Bureau. Option two, adding to this list the full Bureau, which means adding to this list the secretaries. Okay, for everyone? So let's go for a vote. Who is in favor of option one, Bureau authority to add to the list? Raise high, please. Seventeen. Who is in favor of the option two? Adding to the list of secretaries only. No, but the president was oh, president and vice presidents were already including, so adding to the list. No, the, 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 the Michael told the president actually can be not the delegate. Ah, okay. And the, and, and the president, then. The okay. whole bureau. The whole bureau. Let, let's be clearer. Who is in favor of having the whole bureau eligible to be president of the jury? It's addition. Ah, uh, oh, okay, so, so wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, I made a mistake, I, I apologize. Okay, let's make a break. We decided then just before to add to this list people nominated by 
the Ziva Bureau. Now, we're not asking to vote for option one versus option two. We're asking whether people, in addition to all what we've discussed, agrees to add to the list the full Bureau. Okay, so which means, in practical terms, you can vote for both options. Okay, so let's go again for the option two, who is in favor of having the full Bureau eligible. Count again, hi please. We count again because you were late, sir. Twenty-one. Okay, so everything is adopted. We will put that accordingly. Right, so this is about fixing some uh, discrepancies in some parts of the rules where those various terms are used. Uh, for various things, so it's just about having, uh, adding a glossary somewhere and use that when we, uh, word, we, we put the wording on rules, what we talk about when we say it's a class or a category or a gender. Uh, this comes in addition to FAI uh, <coughs> wording, for instance, uh, category event comes in addition to that in FAI rules. This we're talking about our CIVA categories and the media of that uh, advance, etc. Any question, comment? Objection? No? No. Bernie? We live in two piston engine only. What's about um, electrical power in the future? Okay, fair enough. This, this is a, a glossary for today's rules. If you have proposals to add in terms of classes, categories, as we, we've added an intermediate category not so long ago, as, as soon as we have new proposals going through, we adapt our glossary and terminology. Okay. But for the moment, this reflects the full span of what we have. Uh, and uh, is this for the previous one or for yeah, this one? Yeah, because it, 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 that was not the whole proposal. The, it's, not, it's not only the, the glossary, it's the, the, the clarification of this uh, uh, allow, uh, allowable aircraft also. So uh, the way it, it is now in the proposal is you put the piston engine aircraft, which was mentioned first, and then category, I think, to make it clear, you need to put category first, and then that for this category, which airplanes are allowed. And, first of all, and then, again, actually, it doesn't make any sense. Only piston engine airplanes are allowed in all categories right now. Which, if we at least combine it with the uh, other sport and the rules where we say that the airplanes which uh, competing in the category have to have uh, performances which allow them to uh, go through the whole spec of uh, programs, we can put it here. So let's say in unlimited category, the allowable aircraft would be piston engine aircraft with the characteristics which allow them to fly unlimited level competitions and so on. But at least change it now. <laughs> With, with places and category first, then the allowable airports. So what Elena, you've just said, I think, uh, is, is fair and makes sense. It's uh, the, the change that is proposed here, if I remember correctly, when you see the allow, uh, allowable, uh, it's just an editorial correction, I think, before it says allowed or something like that. So it's not, it, uh, it's not a change in that respect. But I, I think this is a fair comment, an editorial comment that we first define the categories and then we list what are the uh, uh, allowable aircraft in the various categories. I think that's a, that's a fair editorial on that. Well, I would just uh, like to add that all these categories actually, uh, all, uh, it was not allowable aircraft before, it was the well, category of aircraft in the rules. 
and it came with the limitation of advanced category airplanes and with a single uh, type of airplane for Yak-52. So when we removed the limitation, the whole uh, clause doesn't make sense anymore except the Yak-52 airplanes. So it's why it, all the editorial started. But now it's kind of, only Yak-52 is kind of separated. All others just piston engine airplanes. Okay, so we'll do like that in the editorial and the detailed wording that we define the categories and then we have allowable aircraft and we will define in this paragraph that it is open for piston engine uh, and for Yak-52, Yak-52s uh, and that would fix all that. Number 28. I'm not going into the details of that. Um, it's, uh, it's some housekeeping mostly on uh, the chief judge assistant's appointment and supervision just to make it in line with the common practice and to make it consistent. Any comment, question? Any objection? Boundary judges. Some, uh, so there was some, uh, some housekeeping on the wording and also uh, making everything uh, consistent clarify that the organizer is responsible for providing a training, the boundary judges and the performance is monitored by the jury, which again is uh, in line with the common practice or what should be done in terms of training, uh, which is simple uh, common sense. Any question, comment? <coughs> just not uh, practical at all. The international jury technically cannot supervise the boundary judges now. It came from a uh, longer time ago when we had more uh, members of the international jury and one member of the international jury really supervised the uh, boundary judges just uh, sitting there the whole day long, as I understand it, as it was before. Now, what do you mean by supervising the activity of boundary judge? Is one of the members of the jury going to sit there and supervise the whole program when it's very critical to have the outs due to the winds on one side of the box? I just, just making the rule and then not implementing it doesn't make sense. So again, it comes to the point of, well, I, I, I'm not going to discuss the uh, existence of boundary judges here, but we are always questioning the boundary judges, and even with this we are questioning it again, we, they need supervision, they need to be trained, they need to know their institute, they need to be international, and so on and so on and so on. So how are you going to supervise the boundary judges by the international? Mike, can I ask you a reaction on that? Actually, if you go to page 18 in section 6, uh, three uh, duties of the international jury, 312 says supervision is to be carried out by the international jury in several areas of the championships. Uh, direct supervision of the international board of judges, which is normally conducted by the chief judge. We supervise the boundary judges. We supervise the activities of the scoring office. We supervise the activities of the Technical Commission. We supervise the activities of the, meet, uh, the MET Center. And uh, we also supervise the briefings and the drawings of lots. And then, of course, uh, there's a couple of other things in here, too. So there's actually a lot of supervisory responsibilities that are given to the jury. It's up for them to carry it out how they see fit. Uh, at juries I've served on in the past, sometimes the boundary judges have been closely supervised and monitored, other times they have not. Uh, but uh, this year, uh, we, uh, all I can speak for is WAC. We went out and we looked at the devices. We'd visit the sites from time to time. We were confident there that the boundary judges were well trained in doing their duties properly. Uh, that was also reported to us uh, at the chief judges station as well because the boundary judges were calling in the outs to the chief judge's station. We were satisfied with the communication and the consistency of the boundary judging there. But 
the jury is a very busy body, busy body of people. Uh, it has several supervisory responsibilities. This is just one of them. And so therefore, that is the reality of what we already do. Pavel? I have to say no, you are not, you are not right. We have boundary judges without any other men behind them to control them. They are responsible for that. The chief judge is responsible at all, generally, for boundary as well. But we don't want to have another man behind them, then another man behind him. That's fine. There was who who wanted to speak? Was it Manfred? Sometimes it's not possible to stay behind the judge, you know, behind the line <laughs> Right, so any objection to the proposal itself here? No, so the proposal is adopted. Personally, I would invite, I would, uh, uh, a side comment, I would invite any delegate who has some issues with the, the way this is supervised uh, to come up with some better ideas in uh, proposals <coughs> next year uh, and, and see what we do from that point. Uh, we have a last one, proposal number 30, which is not for the rule book itself. It's about the uh, aerobatic light sport aircraft category and on this, uh, I will, uh, I think, give the floor to Nick for a couple of words of explanation. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, the 
strategic planning group has a responsibility to look outside the current activities of CBA to see if there is anything else that we could consider that would in the future add to the activities that we already control. And uh, John Gaillard has been looking at the possibility at some future stage of incorporating LSA, airplanes, light sport, aircraft. John has more knowledge of this than I do, so I'll defer to him. Okay, this um, initiated, um, it was going to be a proposal to see if to introduce such a category, but once we started going into this, we realized it was more complex <coughs> than we thought. Um, in South Africa, for example, we just introduced the category, it was no problem whatsoever. Uh, but then we don't have all the European regulations to uh, worry about. Um, the fact is that light sport aeroplanes are outselling uh, general um, aviation aircraft. I'm talking about the very light ones of the, uh, something like 10 to 1, but this is a worldwide phenomenon. People are moving into light sport aeroplanes. Uh, currently in Europe, even though it's probably against European regulations, there are two companies, one in Italy, one in Hungary, actually producing and marketing an aerobatic light sport airplane. So what we would like to do is form a working group to investigate these, the possibilities um, of, of going down this route, because we know that it's going to happen anyway. People will be flying aerobatics in light sport airplanes. And let's rather do it within the CBER and explore those possibilities uh, rather than let them form separate associations. That's it in a nutshell. Okay, so, so just to be clear, this is a request simply that uh, we form a working group and that the working group will report back to SEBA next year. So, any question or comment? from that point. In terms of working group, then? Uh, the Bureau would uh, determine. Yeah, uh, I, uh, what, what about the government? We said yesterday that the working groups need a uh, two-third two majority, so we have to formally vote on, on this, right? Yeah. All right. So, then, we need a two-third majority for this working group to uh, be created and proceed. If there is no further question or comment, we vote now. Who is in favor of this proposal to create this working group? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Who is against? No one. Okay, so we have this working group. I don't know how it goes from that point. Is that the Bureau appoints the members? Yes. Right. So this will be done. I think that's it for this agenda point then. Thank you very much.